macaroons or macarons. They've all made us cry, but with a little practice and the perfect recipe, my recipe, I promise you, you can get that lovely shiny top and it will make you so happy that you'll bake them over and over and over again just to show off to your friends. So the first trick of my recipe is a scale. Helps if I turn it the right way around. <laughs> you have to weigh everything. So in my recipe, we've got 55 grams of egg whites and that makes a difference, I promise you. The other thing is the almonds. So we're going to blend the ground almonds because when you buy them, they're not quite as fine as you want them to be. And we're going to grind them with the Natura Demerara icing sugar because that stops it from turning into nut butter, which we don't want this time. So I've got 150 grams of ground almonds and 150 grams of the Demerara icing sugar which is a little bit more unrefined than normal icing sugar. So it has a lot more flavor. Once you've blended it really finely, you're gonna sieve it through a, as fine a sieve as you have. And um, we wanna get all the lumps out. Any little bits that, aren't, don't, that don't go through your sieve, we're gonna blend again. Although, I got a really great tip from a pastry chef at the Constance Hotel in Mauritius. He keeps all these little bits of nuts to the side and then he folds them in later, which I think is such a great tip because it gives you that lovely chewiness that those professional macarons have. So I think I'm going to do that today. I'll just keep those off to the side. Now we're going to add our egg whites. So this is 55 grams of egg whites, just normal egg whites at room temperature. None of this liquefied aged egg white nonsense. I've tried it, don't, I don't see a difference personally. So you're gonna add 55 grams in here and then food coloring, I'm going to use a powdered one today uh, because I'm gonna make raspberry macarons, my favorite flavor. So we're gonna add this in. If you're using the gel coloring, you can add it in now. Um, want it nice and punchy. Don't stir it. What happens now is some of the, the liquid from the egg whites gets absorbed by the almonds and that's one of the secret steps. We're going to set this aside and then make our meringue. There are two ways of making macarons. So you can either do a French macaron method or an Italian method. I love the Italian method because it's way more consistent and what it involves is an Italian meringue which is a sugar syrup which we pour over the egg whites so that they're really nice and thick and stable and it makes a very, very glossy macaron. So to make an Italian meringue, you start with sugar, which you put in a saucepan. We've got 150 grams of Natura's light brown sugar. A little bit of water, just enough to give you the texture of wet sand. It's gonna help the sugar melt. While our syrup is simmering, I'm gonna add the egg white. That's 55 grams of egg white into a mixer, or if you're going to use a hand mixer, you can put it into a bowl, clean bowl and we're gonna get it ready. As soon as our sugar syrup hits 115 degrees Celsius, we're gonna start the mixer so that by the time it reaches soft peak stage, your syrup is ready at the same time. So you know the meringue is done when it forms a stiff peak like that. So once you have your uh, meringue ready, see it's beautiful and thick, we're gonna fold it into our ground almond mixture. And then we're gonna do one of the most important parts, which is called the macronage. The macronage is the process of folding the macaron batter to get a really shiny, glossy consistency, and that's what's gonna make your macarons perfect. So you use a folding and a cutting technique, and you just continue around and around until the mixture starts to come together. At this point, you can also adjust your food coloring if, if the color's not bright enough for you. So you can see the batter is a little bit on the thick side, but as you fold it and you do the unthinkable and knock out all the air that you've just worked so hard to put back in, the mixture becomes glossier and it starts to get to that ribbon stage that we're looking for. So make sure your batter's ready by dropping it off the spatula. It should form a long, beautiful ribbon like that. It oozes like lava that is ready to go. Now it's time to pipe our macarons. This is your best friend. Even if you think you're a good piper, you need a macaron template, I promise you. When they flood into each other, make such a mess and all your hard work will be ruined. Another thing that I've learned, parchment paper, no silicone baking mats. 
Also, start off with smaller macarons. They're easier and they make feet easier than the bigger ones. So don't go bigger sometimes isn't better when it comes to macarons. Start with the small ones and then go bigger. And then we're going to put it into a piping bag. There's a little bit of a tip when you're baking alone. Is put your piping bag into a water glass. I like to twist it and stick it in the bottom so it doesn't flood out. And then you put it over a, a glass like that. Now you can put the batter in all by yourself. Unless you have a friend, then always use a friend. Okay, now we're ready to pipe. Now that we've piped the macarons, you're again going to do the unthinkable and drop them. And drop them again. And one more time. So this breaks up all the little air bubbles um, that, to give you that beautiful, smooth, glossy, shiny finish. Now we're going to leave them at room temperature. With the magic of television, they're ready! So if you touch them with your finger, like that gently, they have a little skin, they're shiny, that means they're ready to be baked. I have my oven preheated to 150 degrees. You put your uh, oven rack just below middle. So not in the middle, just below middle. And we're going to bake them for about 12 to 13 minutes. It's very precise, but I promise you it will be right. Off to bake them. Look how beautiful these macarons are. I have made them a thousand times, but when they make their little feet, I get so happy. It makes me so happy. So feel free to do a happy dance, because if you can get them looking like this, well done you. Now we're going to fill them with some white chocolate ganache. And I've got some raspberry jam because I like to cheat. Because if you've managed to do this, you've earned the right to cheat. The white chocolate ganache is made with one part cream to one part white chocolate. Good white chocolate. Get the good stuff. Because if you've gone to all the effort of making your macarons, they deserve the good stuff. Wait, what am I doing? What's the point? I'm going to eat it now anyway. The thing about macarons is you should actually wait a day for them to absorb the flavors of the filling and they get all deliciously chewy. But who's got time for that? Uh, the white chocolate ganache is made with a uh, one-to-one... What is it? <gasps> <laughs> it better because they absorb the... Fl the 